go live. All right, welcome everyone. How's everyone doing? It is now 7.03. I'll call this meeting of the Mount Horeb Area School District Board of Education to order. Uh, roll call, please. Uh, I'm not looking at you, so this will be very interesting. Uh, Kimberly, thank you. Kimberly? Here. Jessica? Here. Leah? I don't know where you're Here. Diana? Here. And Jeff? Here. Did I miss Jessica? Jessica, are you? Yes? I'm here. You asked. Okay, terrific. Man, I'm, I'm going to be so glad when we're back in, uh, in person. Um, great. Uh, Dr. Salerno, can you certify that the meeting has been properly noticed? Uh, let's stand and say the, together the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the United States, oops, excuse me, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Item two, agenda and minutes approval. So do we have any revisions? Otherwise, we have a motion from Jeff. Second, Kimberly. And a second from Kimberly to approve the agenda. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries, and the agenda is approved. Item 2B, approval of the May 18th regular and exe executive session minutes. Don't move. Jeff is moved. Second, Kimberly. Kimberly has seconded that we approve the May 18 uh, minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries, and the minutes are approved. Item 3A, school news. That's me. Um, rounding out the end of the school year here, seniors are officially done, which is exciting for the seniors mostly, but we're all very proud of them. Um, our FPS teams are competing at the international competition this week. We have one senior team and two senior individuals competing there with um, hundreds of teams from all over the world. We have a virtual conference set up, so we still get to do that kind of communication with the other kids from different states and countries, and it's looking like it's going to be an exciting time. So I'll keep you posted on that once the results from that come back. Awesome. Thank you, Allie. And congratulations. You made it. Dr. Salerno. Well, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to let you know that our colleague, uh, Danny Michaels, is going to be joining us here on the call in a moment. I uh, noticed that maybe some folks are having some difficulties accessing uh, our meeting tonight. Uh, so uh, for those who are looking in and trying to figure out how to join our meetings, there is a link inside uh, the opening portion of our board agenda. Simply cut and paste that into our uh, into your web browser and then you'll be able to get in just fine. Thank you for those who've been having some problems accessing that. Uh, certainly we, we don't mean to make it difficult for people uh, and appreciate everyone's patience as we're still continuing to find our way through this. And welcome Danny Michaels, good to see you tonight. Thank you for your patience as we found our way through this. Uh, I did want to note tonight, uh, and some of this will be reflective in our update regarding COVID-19, uh, that we have heard word back from Alliant Energy Center and in consultation with Public Health Madison and Dane County, I regret to tell you that it does not appear as though we're going to be able to hold graduation in person. It's not anticipated that we'll be able to meet phase two. Uh, phase two doesn't even allow for us to have that number of people at a social event. And as a matter of fact, I believe there is an email that's just gone out within the last hour to families that are impacted by this. Suffice to say, uh, our contingency plans 
are now um, becoming reality and we are preparing for the process that will take us to a virtual program uh, on July 26th. Rest assured, it will be a very special virtual program uh, because that's what our students deserve, something as special as they are. And so I'm grateful for their patience. I'm sorry, my deepest apologies that we could not get this off the ground the way we had hoped. Um, we're in the same boat as other schools within Dane County and uh, please know that we're going to do everything we can to help our young people and their beautiful families recognize this auspicious occasion. Senior students will have the opportunity this Thursday from noon to 5 p.m. Uh, to pick up their graduation regalia as well as um, drop off any last items and pick up any items that they might like. I believe there was a schedule that was put out. Um, please refer to an email that was sent by Mr. Uh, Ludquist, the principal, there is an opportunity for a professional picture to be taken that night, uh, excuse me, that afternoon, I should say, and it's my understanding that uh, that picture could be used if the student would like as part of their virtual graduation. As to who might be a part of that picture, I'm not certain yet. I don't know if uh, Mr. Lundquist plans on being a part of handing over um, a copy of the, of the actual diploma cover. Obviously, you won't get your diplomas that day, uh, but your diploma cover, I know that he's very, very busy trying to make certain all the stations that day will be covered, but rest assured, um, we want to make certain that your questions and, uh, and we can provide as many answers as possible uh, for you in advance of, of uh, that, that June 3rd uh, meeting. So. Uh, so appreciative of all the great work that everyone is doing and your grace. Uh, this is not an easy decision for any of us and um, rest assured we're going to make it a special day. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, move on to item. Did I miss that again? I, I like the mission statement. I have just skipped it two meetings in a row, though. So I would ask for a volunteer to read uh, the mission statement, probably twice, to get us back into uh, good stead. I, although I'm sure once will once will do. I don't know why I forget it. Would, who who would like to volunteer to do that? All right, then I, 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 I suppose it makes sense. Uh, the Mount Horeb Area School District, in partnership with the community, is dedicated to nurturing, educating, and challenging all students, preparing and empowering them to be productive, responsible, and self-fulfilled members of society. All right. Um, item 4A, uh, personnel transactions. Of a motion to approve. Moved, Kimberly. Kimberly has moved. This is Jessica, I second. And Jessica has seconded a motion to approve personnel transactions. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of approving the personnel transactions will say aye. 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 Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. The motion carries. The personnel tra transactions are approved. Item five, uh, the consent agenda. Are there any items to be pulled out? If not, then I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda, Kimberly. Second. Kimberly has moved and Jeff has, has seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in those of all those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda will say aye. 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 Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. The motion carries, and the consent agenda is approved. Item six A, uh, COVID nineteen update. Steve. Well, you, or, or would you like me to start? Why don't you start, please? Okay. Steve we're do, and I are doing tag team on uh, COVID-19 tonight. Uh, the issue that I'd like to 
to bring to the board for its discussion is when we return to uh, meeting in person. And so I like uh, like to hear the thoughts of the the board. I've done some thinking about it as well, but certainly would like to hear your your thoughts on when we begin again to uh, to meet in person. If I could offer a suggestion, perhaps those who feel comfortable can meet in person in July with the option to continue meeting virtually. Thank you, Kimberly. That was that was the that was the thought that I had as well. We do not need to abide by any of the same restrictions as the school in terms of the students being in the buildings. Thank you for asking that question. I think the students that we could bring people back into um, meet in person would be at um, July first, um, which would be our July sixth Board of Education meeting. Um, because that uh, safer order, uh, safer at home order goes through June 30th. And it's it's my understanding that even though we could begin to meet in person again, that we would continue uh, to deliver our meeting to uh, citizen participants uh, virtually. So we we so and that that really lends itself well. Uh, for for folks who may not feel comfortable meeting in person right out of the shoot in in July. Where My other, we, oh, go ahead. Sorry, oh, Danny. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to uh, say one other suggestion that I would have. Um, I don't. I I think it would be nice to start meeting in person again, um, but to be good examples of social distancing, so that when folks turn tune in to see us. Um, as silly as it may be, if there's, you know, we're all spread out, but that we can, you know, be a good example, especially if we're going to be asking our students to do that in the fall or, you know, just even throughout the summer that we're being supportive of what guidelines are. That's a, that's a great uh, suggestion, a wonderful comment. We, um, prior to the, the Safer at Home, uh, the complete uh, Safer at Home order, we met um, socially distanced in the lobby. You remember, you were there a, a couple of times, Jessica, uh, in the lobby of the of the middle school. And I would envision that we would in that lunchroom lobby area. And I would envision that we would do the same uh, after July first. It would be helpful to us in terms of planning if. Uh, board members would let us know of what their intent is, um, because if we can um, meet in the step room while allowing for social distancing, that will be a lot easier in terms of our staff's uh, efforts to set up for the meeting. Now, if all, all board members attend, by well, all means, we'll be happy to make that work in the cafeteria, but as you might imagine, bringing in television monitors and, and uh, speaker systems and the like does become a little bit more job uh, of a job for our team. We just want to make certain that we have everything set uh, as you'd expect it to be. Does anyone object with us uh, to us moving forward after July 1st uh, under a hybrid system in which those who are comfortable would would come to the meeting in person and those who weren't would participate virtually? Is that is there a consensus around that idea or are there other are there other ideas to uh, that we should we should think about? I support that idea. Great, thank you. I can support that. Jeff has said that he can. Diana or Danny, do you have or Leah? Do you have other other thoughts? I'm I'm bored with that. I think that's fine. Okay. I think to Dr. Salerno's point though is, are we gonna all show up or is it gonna be a mix? Kind of, he wants a little RSVP so that he can make appropriate plans. Right. Thank you for that. And, and maybe uh, that's too soon for me to be asking you of that now, but as we get closer, uh, maybe on the June 15th meeting, uh, you can kind of give some indication. I know that much can change between now and 
a little bit more than six or five weeks from now. Okay, well, unless I hear something differently now, I, I will move forward with that uh, with that working model. And if there are changes that we meet, need to make to it as we move forward, we can certainly do it. But if you'll let um, Steve or me know what your preference is for participation at that first meeting after the 4th of July, um, the date of which we'll, we'll discuss later in the meeting, then that would be great too. All right. Um, it, does anyone have anything else on, on, uh, on the question of in-person meeting? Then we'll move on. Item six. That can't be, that can't be right. Um, sorry. Item 6B, school, uh, summer school update, Mrs. Straka. Thank you. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Mr. COVID uh, in, in total. Uh, Dr. COVID is here. I'm Mr. COVID. So, Dr. COVID, if you'd proceed, I'm so sorry. Oh, no problem. I'll keep my comments brief because I know that um, we've attempted to send out a lot of information to families here over the course of the past couple of days. Obviously, at the top of our meeting tonight, we did talk about graduation under the school news section. But I also wanted you to know that there's some work being done behind the scenes in order to uh, establish a game plan for providing our children with their belongings, as well as for students to bring district-owned property back uh, to their schools. And where appropriate, even uh, get their school yearbook. Um, a letter was sent last week, as well as uh, with a schedule. We know that that schedule is not optimal for every family. And please know that to the extent to which we can be flexible with you, by all means, please do reach out to your child's principal. And we'll find a way to get to a yes on that. <coughs> uh, you may have been reading um, that Madison Dane County Public Health does require that a number of procedures be put into place before July 1st. Um, we're calling these standard operating procedures in order to be in compliance with the July 1st uh, timeline. Uh, these include procedures related to hygiene, cleaning, protective gear, as well as uh, training uh, for our staff, acknowledgement from our staff of our practices uh, by having them sign off, and then what expectations we have for employees with regard to reporting uh, the degree to which um, they've been exposed to someone uh, who's at high risk or uh, they themselves have been ill. Uh, we call that the illness protocol that's required under Public Health Madison in Dayton County. We are putting the finishing touches on that. We're doing that collectively with other Dayton County schools so that we're all working together in tandem to be as um, uh, we're not we're not blazing new trails i guess all of us we're all working together and, and I, we we do know that we are stronger together when working together to that point we don't know all the answers and so we're uh, looking forward to the feedback that we've been receiving from families related to a survey that was administered by the community and legislative engagement subcommittee of the board of education and i'm pleased to tell you as of right now we have about 1700 respondents and we're in the process now of uh, asking families to put the finishing touches on their surveys. Uh, we've administered this survey not only to families, but to our staff members, our students, but I also felt like it was important to administer it to our community because we know what happens in our schools also impact those who don't even have kids in our school district. And so um, that's what's happening right now. And uh, that will be through June 30th. We are looking at hosting our second community's uh, fireside chat that will take place on Tuesday, June the 9th at 1030 in the morning. Uh, and we will record that. The purpose of that chat uh, is to do a number of things. Of course, first to share the preliminary results with our community uh, and then uh, talk a little bit about an advisory committee that we're assembling that's inclusive of many stakeholders within the district. And then thirdly, uh, to talk about questions, comments, or concerns you may have about practices thus far or practices moving forward. Uh, to be sure, uh, we, we really do want to lean heavily on the good work of, of, the, com of the community and make certain that we're doing what you need. Um, we did have such a large number of staff members express interest in wanting to help. You may remember my call to service at our last board meeting. And I'd expect nothing else from such an amazing group of community members, staff members. 
but all the people who said they wanted to help, it became pretty clear that we could not accommodate all those requests. The group would become too unwieldy. As a result, um, we are establishing a district-wide advisory team and then really identifying what are the tights, if you will, and then turning over many of the basic operations of the, of the implementation plans to each site, as every site might have just a bit of a different way in which they want to go about implementing what we are, we are calling the, the tights. So we'll be looking uh, to the survey, we'll be looking to participation at building wide advisory and planning teams and uh, families, uh, inclusive of our 4K staff. We've been invited them to be a part of this. We're so grateful for all each of you are doing. Uh, I think you're going to make us uh, find a, a, a clear pathway uh, in the event that uh, we are not able to return all of our students full time on September 1st. But to be sure, we will have education in our, in, in, for our students on September 1st. It may just look differently depending upon what public health uh, Madison and Dane County uh, tell us. So maybe I'll stop there and just check to see if there's any questions you might have or um, any suggestions you might have. May I ask a question? Um, in one of your previous presentations about COVID-19, you had talked about, um, I think like the state health person had said like, oh, they didn't think that we would meet phase two until quite a ways out. Have you heard, I mean, I know it's just kind of a prediction, but have you heard any other thoughts from any health experts? Yes, I, I think that still tends to be the, the feeling right now, especially in light of the number of activities that um, people have been engaging in in a more communal environment uh, since uh, things have been relaxed a little bit. Um, however, there's 98 days between now and September 1st, I think, and I think as we get closer to that, we're going to hear from Madison Public Health uh, and Dane County um, as to whether or not they think we can meet uh, phase four, which is the total reopening of our schools, or in part at least. Great, great question. Uh, so stay tuned, I guess, uh, Mrs. Aragoni would give the suggestion I'd make. <laughs> Other questions for Steve? Very good. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Now we can move on to summer school update. Mrs. Straka. Thank you. As I think the board was made aware a couple weeks ago, uh, we had to shift gears based on timing from information from the Department of Public Instruction uh, to reduce our original programming that included enrichment and the skills boosters classes um, to just more of the skills boosters and in, in, in kindergarten kickoff. Um, so we've been working with staff to really tighten up our class lists. We had to reach out to parents again to let them know that um, instruction would be in a virtual environment again, um, which for some families, they were not interested in, in pursuing summer school in a virtual environment. They wanted to give their students a break, which we understand. Um, so we've been finalizing lists there. Eric McCormick, our summer school coordinator, has been corresponding with the teachers then um, on how we're going to move forward. So we will have, similar to what we have right now with elementary virtual learning, we'll have a summer school virtual learning page with links um, for, for families to access the materials. Um, we've been asking teachers for about uh, 35 to 40 minutes of instruction which um, would be more flexible independent instruction the videos the activities the practice that kids would do and then teachers are going to meet daily with small groups of kids for about 20 to 25 minutes um, working on the skills that maybe were within that more flexible independent piece that kids can do um, so teachers will have small groups of about four to five kids. It all depends on the age range. Those groups may be larger for middle school students, smaller as we get down to the lower grades. Uh, so cur currently, we have about 140 students enrolled, um, and, and those students are also maybe enrolled in math and reading. So um, other than that, we roll out with summer school starting June 22nd. The week of June 15th, parents will receive mailings um, with any information or hard copies of things from the teachers. So teachers are working on assembling that right now. 
and we look forward to a successful program as much as it can be in a virtual environment. We, we, we know our kids and families have been with us for this long haul, and we're happy that many of them are returning to work with us over the summer. Any questions for Sarah? Great, hearing none, then we'll move to item item 6C, Community and Legislative Engagement Committee Updates. Jessica. Okay, um, we spent, um, well, I shouldn't say we, uh, Dr. Salerno started the meeting with um, a budget update for us and discussed the repair bill that may or may not happen due to the lost revenue for schools. Um, and speculation is that it will not happen until um, it's part of the next budget biennium. So that won't happen until after the election. Uh, but then we spent the bulk of our meeting talking about the survey that just went out. Um, and we just shared our input and our thoughts on the questions and the design. And um, other than that, we did I think what all of the committees have been doing is having our reorganization discussions and decide when we'll be meeting and all that kind of good stuff. Questions for Jessica? And congratulations to Jessica for, and thank you for agreeing to serve as our chairperson. Uh, someone wisely noted that uh, Jessica is the longest serving member of the community and legislative engagement committee. So it stands to the reason that you'll be a great chair of that committee. Uh, Mr. President, you may Thank know you. that uh, we lost uh, one of our parents, uh, uh, Nicole uh, Williams. She, she's getting ready to move. Her and her beautiful family getting ready to move. And so uh, we're looking for families who are interested in serving on our committee uh, to, to let us know. Uh, the more the merrier, quite frankly, our next meeting will likely focus on ways in which we can continue to engage our community. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, item 6D, uh, process used for selecting policies for board consideration. Uh, this was a suggestion that was made uh, during the superintendent's evaluation. And uh, before I kind of share what I've prepared, I want to make certain that um, what you're seeking, I'm able to help answer for you tonight. I guess, why don't you move to what you, what you have? Okay. Um, the, the question was raised about how do we uh, go about selecting policies for the board's consideration and uh, what that process is. And I just wanted to make certain that I'm capturing what you need. Um, to be sure, um, many of the policies that we develop are things that are on our radar and you know what those policies are in advance. Uh, so, for example, um, we know that uh, there are certain policies that, um, like the dress code, for example, that needed some attention from the very beginning at the request of the board. That was provided through the Safety and Wellness Committee. However, there are some policies uh, that are things that come to us uh, from state legislature or federal law that require us to address things. Um, so, for example, uh, when we were talking about standard operating procedures uh, here just a couple of minutes ago during our COVID-19 update, uh, those are things that come up at the spur of the moment and require our attention immediately. And then sometimes there's let laws uh, that change our work. And uh, I wanted you to be aware that as much as possible, we try to be purposeful in our planning and we try to bring uh, items that uh, need uh, policy work on a schedule. Uh, to the board and through their committees, but obviously that's not always the case. Um, we do a great deal of work in making certain that we have as much broad stakeholder involvement as possible. The best example I can use of that is the uh, probably past 14 months we've been working in the personnel committee around uh, social media policy, and I, my guess is we still have some work around that. Uh, from time to time, uh, we also do have to do some research on policies. 
the Wisconsin Association of School Boards did a complete and thorough analysis audit of our policies about uh, five years ago. And I think we have now gotten around to most every one of those policies, save maybe a few, uh, to update and reflect the policies as they had suggested. But um, you receive these two board members, so I, I, I know this won't look unfamiliar to you. Uh, once a month, we get this uh, packet in the mail, and it's uh, called Policy Perspectives. Uh, from the WASB, and I read these pretty thoroughly and then ask members of the senior leadership team to help me in uh, analyzing our policy to make certain our current policies reflect what is being suggested by WASB in these documents and where there is a gap for us to propose something different to uh, each of our respective committees. Uh, another document that we review uh, pretty regularly is something called the focus, also from the WASB. And in these, oftentimes I'm pleased to say that Mount Waterbury School District is featured because of the good work that's been done with your policies and you should be commended for that. Our policies are often uh, cited as policies for other districts to aspire to. Uh, and then one of the things I like about these packets that we get um, each month is that we also um, get copies of policies from other districts too, so that way we can fine tune and enhance. Sometimes policies change multiple times. Hey, Sarah Straka, how many times have we changed the uh, <laughs> the policy related to, to, yeah, there you go, the, the number, magic number three, course options policy, which has even changed its titles. And guess what, because you haven't had enough, we're going to have a fourth sequel to you soon because that policy legally has changed as well. So there's things that are within our control and uh, beyond our control. Oftentimes, quite frankly, there's policy language that comes just about practice. Um, people make fun of me because I like to read all these journals that I get in the mail. Uh, and I get a lot of great ideas out of these. One of my favorite professional development systems is just Twitter. Uh, because a lot of good ideas are found just in reading journals. Uh, and if there's things that we can do to tweak either our policies or our administrative regulations, uh, we want to do that. We can never just be satisfied with standing still. Uh, policies, policies are meant to be breathing, living documents. And um, I'm appreciative of the time our subcommittees take uh, in developing their policies. And then the understanding that our admin regs should reflect that the policies are the what and the admin regs are the how we go about doing the work. And our SOPs get into the granular level. Um, our standard operating procedures get into the granular level. So that's the Reader's Digest version of what I had prepared. Um, but I wanted to make certain that um, if there's something that you wanted um, for me to be thinking about that I wasn't thinking about, uh, I'm happy to take direction. Questions or comments for Steve? Great. Thank you. Any parting thoughts? Um, well, we've got two real good policies coming down the pike here as a result of the good work done by the Education Committee here tonight, Mr. Heiss. The first is a policy on ceremonies and observances, and the next is about religion in the classrooms and schools. These are policies, again, that have been uh, encouraged by our attorneys to look at. All school districts are encouraged to do that right now to reflect that, and the board will consider this at a future board meeting. Awesome. Any, any further comments or questions? Terrific. We will move on to, thank you, Steve. We'll move on to uh, item 7A. Uh, a holiday conflict that we have on the July 6th Board of Education meeting. The conflict looks like this. The 4th of July is going to be uh, celebrated on the, not celebrated, but on the Saturday of that 4th of July weekend in, uh, in many companies and uh, many organizations, including the Mount Horrible Area School District. It will be celebrated on Monday the 6th. So we have two options. We have we can hold the meeting as it's scheduled on the 6th with one administrator, or we can move the meeting to the following night and have our full complement of, of, uh, of, of administrators there to uh, report and generally 
uh, support us during the meeting. I'm okay with them going to Tuesday night. We've done that before in the past. I think moving to Tuesday is a good idea. Would someone like to make a motion to that effect? I'll make I'm moved. It's Danny. Danny has moved. Second. Jeff has seconded uh, a motion to move the July 6th meeting to July 7th. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion will say aye. 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 Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. The motion carries. And the July 6th meeting of the Board of Education is moved to the following night, July 7th. Uh, moving on to item 8A, citizen comments. There are no citizen comments. Item 9, uh, future agenda, agenda items. Does anyone have uh, any additional future agenda items to add to the list? Hearing none, we can move to the uh, last item before the closed session, item 10, schedule next meetings. Does anyone have any questions about the, the schedule, any additions to the schedule? Mr. Heiss, uh, if you don't mind me mentioning, then uh, letter H, the Education Committee, that meeting will move now to July the 7th and that will take place starting at 5.30 p.m. Thank you to Board Member Saylor for agreeing to serve as our fearless leader, chairperson from the committee. Uh, we'll do that July 7th at 5.30. Awesome. Anything else on the schedule of next meetings? Great, we'll move to item 11, closed session. Contemplated closed session per section 19.85 a sub, a sec, excuse me, paragraph one, subparagraph E, deliberating or negotiating the purchase uh, purchase of uh, public properties, the investing of uh, public funds, or conducting other specified public business, whether competitive, uh, whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. We need a motion in a second to move to close session. Jeff has moved. Second, Kimberly. Kimberly has seconded a motion to go to closed session. Is there any discussion? Uh, we'll roll call vote. Uh, Danny. Yes. Diana. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Jessica. Yes. Kimberly. Yes. yes. Leah. Yes. And I am a yes. The motion carries um, and we are in closed session. Mr. President, one of the things I did was I sent each board member a new link to that closed session. Oh, I yes. I see it as 741, and I'm wondering if it'd be okay if we gave room to about 745. Would that be okay to uh, get us onto that new link? Great. Yep, you should have received the new link by, by email. We'll reconvene at 7, uh, 745.